Have you ever had a problem that you've had a difficult time solving? I want you to meet a math class and let's see the problem they're having and how they try to solve it. I do not understand the homework. Can you just give me your answers? No! I worked hard on this all week. You need to learn it yourself. No, I, I don't understand it. I'm going to fail. Can you give me your answers? No. Because I worked hard on this. You can't just slap. Sam, can I, can I use your answers? No. I've been working on this for weeks. I'm gonna fail. <laughs> All right, well, let's look in our Bibles today at 2 Kings chapter 6. And I'm going to read to you about a problem that Elisha was having and how he decided to resolve it. So if you turn in your Bibles to um, chapter 6, verse 8 in 2 Kings, it starts with, it says, When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, We will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But immediately Elijah, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, Don't go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and time again, Elijah warned the king so that he would be alert there. All right, so right now... Um, the Arameans are wanting to take them over, and um, God is warning them every single time that they're coming after them. Then in verse 11, it says, The king of Aram became very upset over this. He called his officers together and demanded, Which of you is the traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? Remember, it's not any one of them. And it says in verse 12, It's not us, my lord, the king. One of the officers replied, Elijah, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel every word you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so that I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back. Elijah is at Dothan. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elijah. Okay, so Elijah's servant is terrified at this point. He looks outside. He sees all these chariots out there, all these soldiers. He can see that the king of Aram is coming after them. And they don't have a lot of people there. And, and, and the army that the king of Aram sent is huge. So here's what Elijah tells him in verse 16. He said, don't be afraid, Elijah told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. And then Elijah prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elijah was filled with horses and chariots of fire. So God's army is actually out there ready to fight for Elijah. So the servant that was terrified, Elijah prayed that he'd have his eyes opened so that he could see that God was on their side. It says in verse 18, as the Aramean army advanced toward him, Elijah prayed, Oh Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elijah had asked. So now this huge army coming towards them now can't see a thing. They don't, they don't know what's going on at all. It says in verse 19, then Elijah went out and told them, You have come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me, and I will take you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to the city of Samaria. And when the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elijah, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Like super excited, like you brought them here, now we can take them down hard, right? And here is what Elijah says in verse 22. Of course not, Elijah replied. Do we kill prisoners of war? Give them food and drink and send them home again to their master. So the king made a great feast for them and sent them home to their master. And after that, the Aramean raiders stayed away from the land of Israel. So Elijah would have been able to kill them if he wanted to. He had every ability to do it. He was now in a comfortable place. Um, you know, there was nothing that really stopped him from doing it except... He loved God and he listened to God and he wanted to do things God's way. And what the blessing was is he took care of them. They know at that point they would have known that, that they could have been killed. He took care of them. He treated them kindly and he sent them on their way. So let's see exactly how our math class resolved their problem. I'm so glad we're all working together now. 
We can get sweet scores on the test. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, Instead of one student trying to copy the answers off of another, they decided to come together and work together. Now, no one had been working on something for weeks and that they were struggling with anymore. They all decided to work together and to learn together. No one was copying one person's answers. No one was doing all the work. They were all working together now and learning together and then enjoying a sweet treat as a reward for working together. And what I want to tell you is that when you're struggling with how to handle a situation is that God has a plan for that. God has a plan that honors him. God has a plan that you can use that honors others. Sometimes in the Bible, you will see that, that people do fight and that is God's plan. But many times in the Bible, God provides an out as well so that we don't have to go around killing everybody. In our own lives, when we're struggling with something, we don't have to be mean to people. We can try and hopefully find a peaceful resolution where we can both get something we want and we can both walk away happy. So my hope for you is that you're encouraged to see how Elijah found a way to end this war without actually having to fight anyone and kill anyone. And I pray that in your own lives that you can have God show you how to handle some of your challenges that you're having. Let's go on ahead and close in prayer. God, I thank you for each one of these kids under the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray that as they face different challenges that they have going on, just that you speak to their hearts and just show them the best way to handle these problems, God. I lift up each one of these kids that they would listen to you and hear what you actually have to say, God. I pray that they don't try to fight their own battles. I pray that they allow you to fight them for them. And I pray that each one of these kids honors you with their actions. I pray that each one of them honors you with their prayers as they come come to you and seek you, God, and I just pray that you bless each one of them as they go through this week and study your word. We love you, we praise you, and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.